In a world where stability can vanish in an instant, being prepared for the unexpected isn't just prudent, it's crucial. So we're going to look into the vital first 90 days following a collapse or catastrophic disaster, exploring what to anticipate and how to ready yourself for the challenges ahead. Surviving the first 90 days after a collapse. When disaster strikes on a national or even global scale, society's fabric can unravel rapidly. Within days, neighborhoods may descend into chaos, catching most people off guard. Few are equipped to endure beyond a week without access to essential resources. Initially, the aftermath may appear deceptively calm with people emerging from shelters and hoping for assistance. However, as days pass, the flaws in our systems become glaringly evident. Stores struggle to function, delivery services fail, and shortages emerge. By the third day, the grim reality sets in. Help may not be forthcoming. Desperation mounts, leading to looting and potential violence. For those who have prepared, this pivotal moment offers a chance to avoid being swept up in the turmoil. Preparing for the first three days. In this critical initial phase, swift action is imperative. Decide whether to stay put or evacuate and prioritize securing water and essential supplies. If possible, ensure your vehicle is fueled up but exercise caution amid the chaos. Communication becomes paramount. Establish contact with your mutual assistant group or neighbors, using alternative methods if traditional channels fail. Stay tuned to emergency channels for updates and make informed decisions about your next steps. In addition to decisions on sheltering in place or evacuating and securing water and essential supplies, it is critical to secure your home, fortify your residence against potential intruders or looters, barricade your doors and windows, and establish a security perimeter if necessary. Gather emergency supplies. Besides water, Gather non-perishable food, first aid kits, flashlights, batteries, and other essential items. Be prepared for power outages and limited access to medical services. Create an emergency plan. Develop a clear plan of action for various scenarios, including communication protocols with family members or neighbors, designated meeting points, and evacuation routes. Secure your important documents. Safeguard important documents like identification, insurance policies, and medical records in waterproof containers or digital backups. These documents may be crucial for accessing assistance or services during and after the disaster. Prepare for medical emergencies. Stock up on prescription medications, medical supplies, and a basic first aid kit. Consider any special needs or medical conditions within your household and plan accordingly. Maintain personal safety. Be vigilant about potential hazards and risks, including unstable structures, debris, and contaminated water sources. Prioritize personal safety and avoid unnecessary risks or exposure to danger. Navigating that first week. As the first week unfolds, the situation grows increasingly dire. Supplies dwindle and essential services falter. Communities may resort to makeshift security measures and the specter of martial law looms. Maintain a low profile and conserve your resources. Ration food and water and avoid unnecessary risks. Collaboration with neighbors becomes crucial as collective strength offers the best chance of survival. In addition to maintaining a low profile, conserving those reserves, 
and collaborating with neighbors, here are a couple of additional items to prioritize during this first week. Establish security measures. Set up a neighborhood watch or community defense system to deter looters and protect your area. Assign responsibilities for patrols, lookout posts, and communication channels to ensure effective security. Conduct regular assessments. Continuously evaluate your surroundings for potential threats or vulnerabilities. Identify weak points in your defenses, like unsecured entry points or lack of visibility, and take proactive measures to address them. Adapting in the second week. By the second week, the landscape shifts further. Crime rises and travel becomes perilous. With roads clogged and resources scarce, reliance on community support deepens. Continue to fortify your position and support your network. Barter becomes a primary means of exchange, emphasizing the importance of stored resources and shared knowledge. Strengthen community bonds. Foster stronger connections with neighboring communities or groups to share resources, information, and support. Collaborate on security measures, resource management, and mutual aid initiatives to bolster collective resilience. Diversify your food sources. Explore alternative food sources beyond your initial supplies, like foraging for wild edibles, fishing, or hunting. Begin implementing sustainable practices, such as community gardens or livestock rearing, to supplement your food stocks for the long term. Beginning Long-Term Sustainability Within the first 90 days, it becomes crucial to start thinking about long-term sustainability. Begin growing your own food to supplement dwindling supplies and ensure a steady source of nutrition. Utilize available resources and knowledge within your community to establish sustainable practices. Enduring beyond three months. After three months, the outlook may appear bleak. Government intervention is unlikely and communities must fend for themselves. Cooperation becomes paramount as survival hinges on collective resilience. Adaptation and Innovation Embrace innovation and adaptability as key principles for thriving in a post-collapse environment. Continually assess and reassess your circumstances, identify emerging opportunities or threats, and adapt your strategies accordingly. Encourage creativity, flexibility, and resourcefulness within your community to navigate the uncertainties of the future with resilience and optimism. Through preparation and collaboration, the challenges of the first 90 days can be overcome. While the road ahead may be arduous, those who have invested in resilience will stand the best chance of weathering the storm. In times of crisis, preparation is the key to survival. By understanding the challenges and planning accordingly, individuals and communities can navigate the tumultuous aftermath of a collapse. Remember, it's not just about stockpiling supplies. It's about fostering connections, sharing knowledge, and working together to build a resilient future. All right, as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this subject. And also, check out this video YouTube has chosen for you to watch next based on your own viewing history.